Okay, Ajay, you want to come up? Uh, so in September of last year, 2016, uh, NHGRI sponsored a workshop. In fact, I think it was in this very room, and some of you, yeah, the room we can't get away from, right? Um, the, <laughs> it is, yes, it is uh, never changing. Um, the purpose of the workshop, I think, was to try to identify opportunities in computational biology and data science. Um, and Ajay is uh, going to present the findings of the, or the report of, from that workshop, correct? Okay. Thanks, Rudy. Um, so I'm here on behalf of the Computational Genomics and Data Science Group and the um, um, co-chairs of the workshop to present the report. Um, essentially, as Rudy mentioned, this workshop was held here in Bethesda, uh, or Rockville, I guess. Um, at the end of um, September last year. The goals were to essentially prioritize genomics research topics uh, of relevance to NHGRI extramural um, uh, with a focus on computational genomics and data science program. Um, and we basically find out, look at our portfolio, look at, see what things need to be continued and what things need to be enhanced and supported and what new challenges we need to address over the next three to five years. Um, <clears throat> it, it essentially worked in the same way as a lot of our workshops do. We identified um, co-chairs from the external scientific community and three of the council members here were part of the co-chairs. Those are um, Carol, Trey, and Aviv. Uh, Mike Benke and Lincoln Stein made up the other two members of the organizing committee. And um, the, along with the um, NHGRI computational genomics staff, we um, held various meetings to identify who we should invite to, what the general topic areas would be, um, and during the, the meeting, we had 39 extramural researchers come here, um, along with staff from NHGRI and NCI and IGMS and uh, the ex um, um, ads office, which was Phil Bones' um, big data, data science, NIH wide office. Um, as far as the organizing the meeting goes, as I mentioned, the sessions were. Session topics were designed by the organizing committee. The speakers and the details of what was to be presented and who was going to present was um, organized by the attendees along with um, the, uh, the co-chairs and um, NHGRI staff. There were um, five sessions that were held. So uh, these were sort of like breakout sessions where a lot of details were discussed. Um, so these um, essentially boil down to challenges facing basic science, challenges in the clinical realm, um, essentially talking about what data and compute resources need to be there for, for genomics, um, computations to be done at scale was the third topic. And the final topic was how we collaborate with other institutes and other resources that exist um, within the genomics arena. Um, so as usual, the, the workshops, we started out with um, a general background presentation where, you know, our portfolio was presented by, by staff. Um, we discussed the, the aims of the workshop, then we broke out into separate sessions. Um, into each one of the sessions that I talked about earlier. Each session recommended a bunch of um, areas of focus and topics, and then we got together, and we used some technology to try and understand what these different um, um, suggestions and priorities were uh, to be able to um, communicate with the entire group, what each one of the individual groups would discuss, and we used um, dot storming, which is essentially a technique by which um, you vote on different ideas, and during the voting process, 
uh, all the questions about what exactly was meant by a particular recommendation and suggestions were refined in multiple rounds. And eventually, we boiled down to 13 recommendations. Um, the import of the recommendations, each one of them are essentially highlighted, and I'll just read the highlighted sessions. Um, these are not in any um, recommended order, so the first one doesn't mean that got the most votes. Um, so interactive analysis and visualization of large data sets was identified as an important topic. Um, another long-standing one was understanding how genotype translate to phenotypes. Uh, ensuring genomic data sharing was um, a third one, and causal variants identification and computational tools. Um, there's a lot of focus on uh, developing ontologies that are phenotypic focused, uh, developing efficient and scalable algorithms, um, supporting what was called vertically integrated resources uh, along with horizontally organized knowledge bases. Vertically integrated resources are specific resources that focus on single data types and horizontally organized are uh, like model organism databases that go across data types. Um, another recommendation was um, scalable, intelligent, uh, and cost-effective development of metadata. Uh, I, I called R reproducible. It should be reusable. That was a, that's a mistake in the slide. Uh, developing the cloud environment for NHGRI investigators was uh, the ninth one. Rigorous benchmarking and gold standards for both analytical methods, uh, doing the right set of experiments, and collecting the data resources, as well as phenotypic uh, um, annotations. Integrating genomic data into clinical decision supports and improving the process by which um, that can be enabled. Uh, the, other, the next one, 12th, is integrating patients more fully into genomic medicine research and support for informatics and computational needs for single cell work. Um, so that, that was essentially the, the, the set of recommendations. Uh, now I get to what we as staff plan to do about it. So we um, are going to undertake a, a range of portfolio analysis, and I'll show you an example of that, and take these uh, recommendations either to continue um, a certain emphasis that exists in current programs and current PAs, uh, or work on the policy end, or continue working on the policy end, and or create new initiatives. So. Um, we actually at NIH now have some reasonably good um, tools for doing portfolio analysis. So I'm, I'm going to take you through an example of such a portfolio analysis. So genomic visualization, which is the first recommendation, um, is basically what I did was um, I created a, a bunch of queries, the simplest one being genomic visualization, the tilde R is essentially uh, a way by which the natural language processing algorithm looks for genome and visualization within 10 words of each other. So essentially, the idea is to create a, a, a range of queries that would avoid um, not finding uh, relevant grants. So we can do this both within NHGRI, within NIH, as well as funded uh, grants across many uh, other um, agencies and, and also the European Union and so on. Anyway, so you can take these queries, look at the results. Um, you can place any type of constraints that you want on it. You can put constraints in the number of years. You can look at non-awarded ones, uh, NHGRI ones, and non-NHGRI ones, and you can then sort of manually curate this. And, and it's a fairly reasonably efficient way to, to go about it. And so just to finish the story for the genome visualization, um, what we found is that in the last decade, uh, uh, the, the query initially re uh, reproduced about 42 grants that were funded. 
which after curation um, boiled down to 11. Uh, at the non-NHGRI funded level, this was the breakdown before curation and after curation. And um, if the, the key about the, the genome visualization recommendation was that it was supposed to be interactive. So if you add the word interactive to it, you get a much smaller number of awards, and you can actually see that, you know, all the, the awards that we actually do do fund, you, they are reproduced in, 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 in the portfolio analysis. So um, it's, a, it's a pretty efficient system, and it's, it's a usable system, and we can actually use it to, to um, um, figure out what we need to emphasize in existing PARs, what need continued support, and what new initiatives you can propose. So what we propose to do as next steps is uh, publish the report on the website and advertise it. And we expect to finish the portfolio analysis by summer. Uh, these recommendations will also uh, be used as input to the entire institute strategic planning exercise. Um, I would like to end with acknowledging all the co-chairs, Mike Benke, Carl Bolt, um, Trey Eidecker, Raviv Raghav, and Nimfen Stein, Kevin Lee, um, who helped keep us through the entire process of um, starting with planning for the workshop and through today. Um, the, my colleagues um, within the computational genomics um, subgroup within NHGRI and Eric Green, Carolyn Hatter, and Jeff Schloss, who started this effort. Thank you. I can take questions, and I'm sure Carol and Aviv, I don't know if Aviv is still on the phone, um, if they want to I'm, say something. I'm still on the phone. Any questions or comments from the council? When you do the search, are you searching just the NIH portfolio, is there some way to also, like, look at what the Wellcome Trust or other international groups, Global Alliance, whatever might be doing in these areas? Yeah. So I think, I think one can look at the European ones, um, certainly, and the UK ones. It, but they only, we only find out the funded portfolios, not what they didn't fund, whereas within NIH we can ask questions of which grants we didn't fund. First, thank you for the summary, and thank, thank you, Carol Ann, for the, you know, obviously this is, I've given this speech before and I won't give it again. In my opinion, this is one of the most important things that NHGRI can be doing. But the challenge is, and how did you, how much did you talk about, A, how do you prioritize in this field? And then the second is, how do you prioritize and at the same time ask the, the critical question, what can NHGRI in particular be doing um, to promote the field? Did the, the workshop address those two points? I mean, 13 probably to you sounds like a wonderfully narrow scope because you probably started with 130. But indeed, 13 still is a very large number, and some of those are broad in their careers. They're not um, the results of a, of, a, of a study, for example. Yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think people did, in, to various degrees, um, try to think about how you improve the, the efficiency of the resources and the tools that are developed. Um, I, I don't think anybody really had any um, you know, magic bullets. I mean, I think we are all sort of stuck um, in in some ways about how to proceed. I think some of the ideas that that came out um, during for the the discussion with um, other institutes on how we interact better. So. Um, so, for example, during the discussion for what is um, called the sand or used to be called the sandbox, and and the genomic data commons, 
that, that the NCI has, is piloting, there are lots of lessons that we can learn that would improve efficiencies. Um, there are broader conversations that within NIH that, that um, Dr. Patty Brunn alluded to about contracts within, um, within at, the, at the NIH level where PD2K is trying to look for ways by which you can reduce costs by um, leveraging cloud resources, not only in terms of financial um, um, ability to negotiate, but also with respect to recruiting engineers from the various cloud providers to be able to help us do implementations that are efficient, that are um, cross-boundary. I mean, that, that can cross various boundaries of scientific discipline. So it was, we had hoped to try to get to that very specific question. I think the challenge was we brought people into this workshop uh, from, from very many um, areas that aren't necessarily, uh, these individuals weren't necessarily familiar with the NHGRI portfolio balance. So to ask them to come up with a, you know, here's what NHGRI can do uniquely out of all of these things was, was really beyond the scope of time and, and actually data that we had to, to ponder during the course of the workshop. So, you know, clearly, um, a lot of the things that came out as recommendations um, overlap a lot with what we saw in Patty's slide deck today. You know, these are, there's nothing that really jumped out as being particularly surprising. But I will say that NHGRI has really been at the forefront um, in a very impactful way, uh, for example, in, in the whole ontology development area, right? So NHGRI has led that from the very beginning, and that's been transformational to the analysis of genome data. So NHGRI has already been at the leader, has been a leader in, in sort of promoting data science principles and concepts. And whether or not uh, after the um, portfolio analysis that Ajay is working on now, uh, I don't know if that will identify any, anything where NHGRI is uniquely positioned to only be the only one right, to lead, to lead in filling those gaps, but at least we'll have a better understanding about what the gaps are. And then I think the idea would be to step back and ask that question again. So, I mean, I think as usual, this is, this is an ongoing conversation and some of the new efforts that Eric is leading with the, with the council subgroups would, would be informed. In some ways, <clears throat> This can form an early charge for that council working group to think about how you would take this nice list and prioritize it and, and give it a little granularity. I also think it's, uh, you know, the prioritization for what, I mean, we, we divided it up and there's infrastructure priorities, then there's, you know, genome science slash biology priorities, which might be different than genomic medicine priorities. So it really, the priorities really are, are context driven. It really depends on what area you're talking about as to where the priorities will fall out. But, but I think that also emphasizes the importance of NGRI um, um, leading on this because um, because I think everyone can get stuck on this priority conversation for a very long period of time without, without anything actually happening as a result. Whereas the, the, just the rate of data generation in AGRI um, supported activities is such that you simply can't afford that privilege of, of sitting there and waiting, and that's a good thing. And that, in some ways, it, it's a repeat of my earlier conversation that in seems like the, the worst thing we can possibly do is get ourselves stuck uh, as a field. It's just there are many things that can be done. It, the field's moving very rapidly, so in some ways that creates a tendency maybe to act stuck, but we just can't do it. We have to push. We have to push ourselves and, and push the field. So I also, I also think that this is a really, uh, that these areas that are going to come out of this portfolio analysis are going to be great subject matter for um, 
the unsolicited pool for individual investigators where we can get innovation and new ideas uh, coming from individual investigators it, it, that will end up supporting the overall mission of the Institute and some of the big programs. But I, I do think this will help us bring more people into, uh, into the computational field relevant to, to genomic biology and genomic medicine. I also want to I want to emphasize in the, just to further echo and strengthen the things that were said is that because of the need to move with some agility and speed and and because for some of the other activities that are very big initiatives and for other institutes that are much bigger than NAGRI, the, I think the instinctive response is well we need to ponder this with great seriousness because this is such a major investment and what should be done and so on, then there's kind of the instinctive response to not do anything. Whereas trying out a bunch of things could be a lot more beneficial. And software today is such that it's true that it's expensive and you have to invest a lot into it, but in fact, it is cheaper to get a, at least compared to what you get in return, it is cheaper to get started than it used to be. It used to be that you had to invest a lot more in infrastructure and in coding time in the old days than you do today in order to get the same or a better even outcome today in terms of the sophistication of code and the code bases that exist and the fact that the cloud exists. All these things really change the nature of how quickly you can go and make an impact. And, you know, a stellar four-person team can go a very, very long way in writing a piece of open source software that really transforms what people can do if it's the right team. That's not to say that you don't need major investments in infrastructure. You do, but that it is just important to be timely and to move. The two are not mutually exclusive with each other. And I think that was that was a sentiment that was heard very uh, substantially in the in the in the workshop. That we we need to get going. We can't say in the past we're getting so behind the times. It's embarrassing. So I, I just want to second, third, or fourth, or whatever the, those those comments. I think this is a critically important area. I really like the idea. We need to. We do need to move forward. We need to move as quickly as we can. The idea of putting out something to get some investigator initiated things, get something going, get some ideas going, get some people thinking about these things. I think is really important. I want to add one note that I was actually only. Morning, when I read again the, the slides and recommendations and so on, I realized that the the proposal touch uh, the the recommendations kind of touch on two things and they tend to be separated from one another. There's a set of recommendation that talks about the data, and there's a set of recommendation that talks about the analysis piece. And there are very few recommendations that actually talk about how data and analysis come together. So, for example. We have tool technologies and policies to ensure genomic data sharing. But often it's about sharing the data and the analysis capabilities on this data together. And so I think that would be an interesting thing to think through in terms of some of the specific phrases. So I wonder. I probably should have made that comment a long time ago, but it only <laughs> occurred to me now. Well, I, I, I mean, this is Carol, so I wonder, and Ajay might. Remember, so these these 13 recommendations were kind of the result of that dot storming voting, and I think in the fuller yeah. documentation that the point you just made is is fleshed out as a is an yeah, important I think area. Yeah, fleshed out better in the full document, but if these statements are the ones that kind of resonate in everyone's mind, it's important to know that the spirit of the conversation was a little more nuanced than what we can say in these very short bullet points. Maybe that's the right way of phrasing. Yeah, I mean, I think the document actually does contain some of these ideas. Okay. Thank you, Ajay, and thank, thank you, Council, for your input.